we all know what the deal is with the WWE. When it comes to television, Raw is the backbone of the company. Raw is the flagship show that is the standard bearer, the gold standard for the company. What they do on television, everything funnels into Raw. That's the way it's always been. Even back in the day when they used to do Shotgun Saturday Night and Sunday Night Heat and you know Superstars and now talking about SmackDown, which has been around since 1999. Even with all these other shows, their primary premise and purpose was to always supplement Raw. Raw was the standard bearer. It's what the WWE based television deals off of. It's what they still base television deals off of. It is their primary focal point in terms of television. There's no question. And, you know, when you look at SmackDown and how it came to be, it really was a reaction to WCW Thunder. This was a time where the company was incredibly hot. They were going head to head against WCW on Monday Nitro and then Thursday Night Thunder. And as a result, the WWE, with their popularity at the time, you know, with the one show of Raw that was doing the ratings that it was doing and the viewership that it was doing on a consistent basis, week in and week out, going up against, mind you, other direct head to head competition in the wrestling business in WCW, it only made natural sense for the WWE to do a Thursday night show, to do a SmackDown show. It was a way to get more people potentially in front of the product. It was another chance to expose all the great talents that you had at that time. It was also a way to, to build off of what you had with Raw, where the fans didn't have to wait an entire week in order to see what would happen next. You could use SmackDown as a platform to promote Raw, to perfect things that you were going to do on Raw, to help with your plans for what you were going to do on Raw, and then subsequently the pay-per-views. SmackDown would be a chance to do some different things. It would be a way to try something new, try something fresh. You could take a little more risk and a little more chance because at the end of the day, no matter what, SmackDown was always going to be the B show. It always has been. Ever since it came into being in 1999, even at times where the SmackDown product has been far superior to the Raw brand, even when fans have enjoyed SmackDown more than Raw, we all know the truth. At the end of the day, Raw is the A show, Raw is the flagship, Raw is the standard bear. And SmackDown is just along for the ride and it will always play second fiddle, even when you had the brand split for years. You would have great talents on SmackDown. You would have talents on Raw. A lot of times... The writing on SmackDown was better, the stories were better, the matches were better, sometimes, frankly, the talents were better too. But at the end of the day, even with the brand split and all of this, Raw was still the one. Raw was still the show. But now as we look at things have evolved and changed over the years with the continued decrease in viewership of Raw, every single week, especially in its three-hour format, combined with now SmackDown is going to be Tuesday nights every week instead of where it was Thursday nights and then it was Friday nights and it was back to Thursday nights. Now it's found a home on Tuesday nights. When you look at the changing landscape of the drop in Raw viewership, the fact that now SmackDown is live every Tuesday night in a much better night and time slot, and you look at some other circumstances and factors, it's not a surprise to me at all that I've seen quite a number of people refer to SmackDown as the A-Show. People have been doing it for a while, but it's never really been true, except for maybe a viewership and enjoyment standpoint from a fandom standpoint. From an actual business standpoint, though, and a product standpoint, some of these fans aren't wrong. SmackDown can be the A-Show, and coming up, I believe it's going to be the A-Show. Will that stick? Will it be permanent? Probably not. Could be, but right now when you look at it, I think there's a whole series of factors that can point to that SmackDown is the A show right now. And, and there's a lot of different things. Uh, first, you got to look at the fact that they're on Tuesday night. During the fall, they're not going up against the NFL head-to-head -head like Raw is. Now, we're not going to sit there and use that as an excuse to explain the decrease in Raw viewership because the viewership stunk and the ratings stunk during the spring and the summer when there was no NFL to go against. However, from a SmackDown standpoint, whereas a lot of fans might not be watching on Mondays because of the fact that Monday Night Football's on, they might want to get their WWE fix, might want to get updated, might want to actually see some wrestling. 
they may tune to SmackDown. Or if nothing else, because of football taking away some more eyeballs, if SmackDown's here, eventually it gets to the point where enough eyeballs are taken away that by default, SmackDown gets this better rating and it has more viewers. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens as soon as this upcoming Monday from when this video is being recorded, because not only will you have an NFL game on Monday night, you're also going to have the first presidential debate and the circus and clown show that that's going to be. So that's going to take even more eyeballs away. So it would be almost an act of God, ugh, if SmackDown didn't beat Raw in the ratings this upcoming week, and it might stay there after that. Another big thing is the formatting of the show. SmackDown's only two hours. Raw is three. And for a lot of people, even those that are sheepish on the WWE and love it and defend it no matter what, They'll acknowledge that three hours every week of the show is just too damn much. And especially when the show isn't that good or if the show flat out sucks, that's a hell of a miserable experience to sit there and watch three hours of it. And that's a major contributing factor to why a lot of people have just turned away from it. You know, why watch three hours of it if it's not going to be compelling or interesting? I can get my updates on the interwebs, the dirt sheets, and from people posting on social media. I can go to the WWE's YouTube page and find out the highlights of the night. Why the hell would I sit through three hours? There's just no reason to. Well, with SmackDown, it's still a long show, but it's only two hours. So the whole feeling and mindset watching SmackDown compared to Raw is night and day. If a SmackDown show is not particularly good, it's only two hours. I think sometimes that's part of the genius of NXT and why so many of the hardcores really love it, is even though there are plenty of flaws with that product, and it's not as great as people like to make it out to be, the fact is, it's what, an hour? I think it is every week? It's so short. So even if it's not great, your attention span doesn't have to be that long. You can get through it, and you, and you compare it to Raw, where you would have two more hours of that crap. You're like, my God, this feels great. Well, SmackDown, you get an hour less, so you don't have a third hour to potentially drag down the ratings when you get a lot of viewer fatigue. You can keep your audience fresher for two hours, and frankly, it forces you to prioritize what you're going to do on television because you only have two hours. You don't have the ability to be lazy because you've got that third hour to fill like the WWE does with Raw. Also looking at it from a product standpoint, you've got arguably the two most prestigious titles in that company on this show. You've got the WWE Championship and the Intercontinental Championship. Those are the two belts that fans probably care about the most. You know, disrespect to the Women's Championship or that god-awful WWE Universal Championship belt or the U.S. title. But you look at it, you've got the WWE title. While the other one's called the WWE Universal title, it's not the WWE title and we all know it. The Universal title is just another version of the World Heavyweight Championship. The WWE World Heavyweight Champion is the number one champion in the company. It's the way it always has been. It's the way it always will be. And SmackDown has that belt on its show. So as a result, the WWE is naturally going to gravitate towards that belt a little bit more and care about that belt a little bit more because it is the top belt in the company. And then in terms of the mid-card titles, the top title is the Intercontinental Championship. There's a lot of history going years back with it, a lot of prestige to it. Sure, it doesn't mean what it once did, but from a fan standpoint, you care more about the IC title than the U.S. title, especially if you're a long-term WWE fan, let's face it. So they've got arguably the top two titles in the company. When you look at the authority figures on TV, you've got kind of that odd hodgepodge of Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley. It's just kind of odd and weird. Whereas on the SmackDown side, you've got Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. You've got two people that the fans naturally gravitate to, two people that the fans really respect, two people that the fans really like. You know, just from an authority standpoint, I can sit there and watch Shane and Daniel Bryan, or I can watch Stephanie McMahon, and it doesn't matter who the other damn person is. I'd probably pick Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan because it feel a lot fresher for a lot of fans. It's a way to see Daniel Bryan every week, a way to see Shane McMahon every week. One guy who once main invented WrestleMania two and a half years ago, and now he's had to retire. And the other guy who was gone for over six years, and now he's back helping run the show. I mean, Shane McMahon, Daniel Bryan, or Stephanie McMahon, Mick Foley. Think about that. In terms of the talent that's on the show, you've got AJ Styles, John Cena, Randy Orton, The Miz, Dean Ambrose, laugh at my Miz stuff if you want, but he makes the mid-card titles mean something, damn it. He's one of the few guys in this company that can actually get the proper reaction that he's supposed to. You've got so much flexibility and versatility with him. 
But you've got the two faces that ran the place for the past decade in Cena and Orton on the show. You've got Dean Ambrose, one of the newer, fresher faces, so to speak. And then you've got the current face that runs the place, the WWE champion at this time, AJ Styles. With all of his years of past history in TNA and ROH and New Japan and everything else, when you look at the talent roster at the top, now with the brand split, part of the problem is it thins out the roster and the rosters on both shows aren't as strong as if you have everybody together at one. But if I'm choosing between the two rosters, I look at this roster and I sit there and say, I'd rather watch a roster that has AJ Styles, John Cena, Randy Orton, The Miz, Dean Ambrose, than I would one that has, let's say, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Rusev, Kevin Owens. And just more interesting performers on SmackDown for in terms of the top guys. And then you look at the women's division. While it might not have Sasha Banks and Charlotte like Raw does, I think the depth of the women's division and the fresh faces in the women's division are superior on SmackDown. And frankly, the ring product could be better overall on SmackDown as opposed to Raw. So if you buy into the women's revolution bullshit, I think the women's division on SmackDown is going to be more pleasurable to you than it will be on Raw. And then when you're watching from a television standpoint, I could have a commentary team of Michael Cole, Byron Saxton, who has no business being a commentator on Raw, and Corey Graves, who people like, think he's good, but at the end of the day, wrestled as many important WWE matches as I have and has no business being a color commentator on WWE television, let alone on the flagship show of Raw. I can come to SmackDown and I can watch Mauro Ranallo. And yes, you've got JBL's annoying ass and David Otunga oddly trying to be a face commentator, but at least Otunga's a former tag champion. JBL's a former tag champion, world champion, mid-card champion, WWE Hall of Famer. And it fits together so much more because instead of Michael Cole and how he ruins so many moments and he fucks off so many times, you got Mauro Ronaldo. His voice is a little grating, but believe me, I know about a voice being grating. <laughs> There's energy. There's passion. He actually calls the action in the fucking ring. When a moment is big, he actually treats it like it's a big fucking moment. And when you've been watching Raw for so long and watching how that commentary team, especially when it was Cole, JBL, and Lawler, and how terrible that was, now you sit here and you watch the commentary on SmackDown, and you got Mauro Ronaldo. He's not JBL, but he's not bad. And he's most certainly a hell of a lot better and more entertaining and engaging to watch than Michael Cole fucking is. Also with SmackDown, you're talking about a show, since it's not Raw, and it doesn't have some of the built-in pressures of Raw, where they're trying to do things and play it safe, but at the same time, they're trying to go up against Monday Night Football, if they even care. On SmackDown, you can take more chances. There's less pressure. There's more possibilities to be creative. It's always kind of had that feel when they wanted to with SmackDown, the WWE can take more chances, do more things. And I know at the end of the day, Vince still has final say. And I know Stephanie and Hunter are incredibly involved with what goes on on Raw and SmackDown. But I can tell you at the end of the day, Vince McMahon will always have one and a half eyeballs on Raw and half of an eyeball on SmackDown. So you could do some different things there and it's not going to resonate with him the same and not going to bother him the same. So when you look at all these factors to me, I look at it and I say, yeah, SmackDown can be the A-show, and it's about to be the A-show. Now, is it going to last? Eh, you know, football season will end in a few months, and the ratings and viewership for WWE will go up slightly. As we get into Royal Rumble season and then WrestleMania season, if the ratings for Raw are below SmackDown, there's going to be a pride factor there, and the company's not going to stand for that. And as a result, they're going to do some things, bringing in the Brock Lesnar's, maybe the Takers, who knows, maybe a freaking Goldberg. They will throw more of the big veteran names, The Rock. They're going to throw them on Raw to try and jack up the Raw rating. So I don't know if it's going to last, because at the end of the day, Raw is still the flagship, and Raw is still going to be the number one focus. But at this particular moment in time and going forward at least the next few months, SmackDown should be the A-show and probably will be the A-show. And frankly, based off of some of the factors that I just listed here, it deserves to be the A-show. If for no other reason, if for no other reason that you can watch it without having to flip back and forth between Monday Night Football and the fact that it's a two-hour show as opposed to three. If for no other reasons, if none of the other stuff that I said to you matters, those two should. If you want to watch WWE right now, frankly, you should say the F with Raw, I'm going to watch SmackDown.
because I'm actually going to start watching SmackDown. I know. 